Hello buddy, my name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about another backdooring attempt of open source projects. Now this one isn't the stealthiest technique I have ever seen, but it's extremely concerning how supply chain attacks and just there is a concerted effort to make using open source software less safe. This one reminds me a bit, given it's been targeted at AI projects, of the Null Bulge and Comfy Vision attacks earlier this year. Not that I think they're related, it's just... It, it, it's not clear whether this is just a malicious attack or it might be uh, targeted for other reasons. So the first stage is here. Clarify MLX requirement for DeepSeq models. So they're basically trying to make it look like they're just doing a documentation bump, which is already sort of controversial, just writing a piece of documentation to get a pull on an open source project. Some people don't like it when you do that, but there we go. And then down here, just at the bottom, what do we have here? exec uh that's not a good sign dot join character x for x in and then we've got a massive string of characters so what does this care for x do well basically that just takes the ascii ordinal which is a number that corresponds to a character now here this guy is saying did you mean to do that now, the only thing that might make this a bit easier to fall for is that this guy is actually impersonating quite a well-known figure in AI, this Evil Dojo 666. Now, most people on here actually thought Evil Dojo 666 was a red flag, but no, that's actually his name. So he tried it to a couple of other projects as well, Dark Mage 666. He's no longer on GitHub, and we can see he had done the same thing. And then Malcor actually does have the deobfuscated payload. So this user has been making this PL in multiple different repos. Targeting stable diffusion. These are not just AI. It looks like some of these. Uh, there's a Bitcoin one. So these are pretty broad. Uh, and then we got import OS, import URL lib. And then from evildojo.com, we download stage one payload. Then y equals x dot read, which is simply the text of that. Then we decode that with UTF-8, close it and then execute it. So this is actually going to be some sort of PowerShell script. Now, as far as I know, uh, we'll see if Malcor has it, but nobody else has archived that. And then there's more indication over here of people continuing to look at it. So th this person definitely made several accounts, and if you can search on GitHub, and GitHub is unfortunately littered with malware. We can see all of these different things, and you should never... This is never a good sign to see. So this is simply, it's going to call this. This is two years old. So let's see what this older one does. It's the same idea. Trick as always to dealing with these kind of things. If you can clearly see in the script where the execution is, and ideally you do this on a virtual machine and not a virtual machine that you have anything signed into. So we're going to be really careful here because I have my accounts on this VM. But it should be dead if it's two years old and download something from the internet what do we have here? A link to another questionable uh, piece of GitHub code. If this exists, we print this, and if it doesn't, we print gaggle. Okay. Now, this first chunk is then just importing HTTPX, and then we get this URL, and this user is no longer on GitHub. Wait a second. They are. But they removed uh, any references to the malicious project. This one is a bit stealthier in using the semicolon method, so that you might not initially notice. This also appears to be Python 2, given the lack of parentheses. This one actually has quite a bit more going on. We've got Marshall, and this then loads that in. See what this one does. Work because we can't unmarshal the string easily, but this shows that this method has been in use for a long time. I'm going to search for an alternative with a semicolon exec, because you can be very confident anything with semicolon exec is not legit. So we go, okay, rare exception here. My boy's at Vector35, not doing anything shady. Reverse shell as a service. This could be. Now this one has layers, and I actually, okay, good thing that, so that's interesting. So if you, that's why you don't use that trick, not on a VM, because... Uh, I actually, well, luckily it didn't work because I think this was intended for Linux, but I'm actually curious now to see what this really is. 
Seems like it's executing rmrf slash, which of course doesn't, trying to delete procfs, which of course doesn't work. Yeah, so it just, what it does is it calls os.system uh, with a bunch of rmrfs. What a strange piece of uh, code. So it basically, it's, I'm assuming it's targeted, because it seems to be targeted at a weird Android distro, and then it executes a bunch of very obfuscated code that ultimately uh, calls rmrf slash. Never a great idea. So that's going to be all for this video. It's interesting how these tricks keep on escalating. They're not just uh, hiding them in projects for skids anymore. Now they're actually trying to target legit projects across the board. So the main way, of course, is if you're an open source maintainer, you want to be checking. If there's a pull request, especially if it looks like it's really minor, just check they haven't snuck anything in. If you're a user, the only real thing you can do, especially if you're a developer, is you can think, especially if it's a trivial function, do I need to use an external library for this? Or should I just DIY it? That's one way. You can also be very careful when updating dependencies, but the unfortunate reality is until automated scanning gets better, this is going to be a serious security threat, uh, both with open source software and also with proprietary software, as we saw with the absolute disaster that was the trading tools supply chain attack, which managed to spread to other companies. So really, just paying attention to what's installed and hope it, and checking if something does look different. Just think about how XZ was called. It was just that it was slightly slower than it should have been. That's all it took. That's all for me for now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Bye.